Brad here with Twist Elk Brewery. Today we're going to talk about the 20 by 20 plate filter system. We bought this one from GW Kent. There's a few different manufacturers out there. They're all basically the same. Some might have a few little different tweaks, but the principle of filtering, uh, whether you're using this or even a 40 by 40 for that matter, is really about the same. So we're going to go through the full process uh, all the way from the prep, cleaning, sanitation, how to load the filter pads, which filter pads to use, and how this little system works. I know a lot of breweries use the 40 by 40 size. We looked into that and that is a nice size and I kind of wish we had more room in the brew house to put that, but that was our biggest factor. Our, our brew house is so small and we only have a five barrel system right now. So this was actually perfect for a five barrel size. I think you could get up to a seven barrel and utilize this. I think you can get enough filter pads in there to do that. Uh, 10 barrels will be pushing it. First step is do a quick hot water rinse on the system. We clean this really good when we're done with it. However, it does sit around the brew house. Sometimes it can be two, three weeks before we filter a batch of beer. So at that time, I mean, the dust and everything settles in here. So you wanna make sure that we're just rinsing it all out really good. We're gonna flush all of our ports. We wanna make sure we flush our pump out. We're also gonna make sure that we're taking the plates and uh, separating them and rinsing these plates down individually like this. So we're gonna rinse the whole thing. Step two sanitize. We sanitize everything down. I like my star sand solution. I mix it in a little squirt bottle. It makes it real easy to sanitize everything. I squirt everything down from the ports. I take the plates out individually, hose them down real good. There's a lot of like little cracks and crevices in there that you want to make sure that it gets in there and it all gets sanitized. It's a good practice to sanitize everything and that's going to prepare us for loading our filter pads. At this stage, we've already rinsed and sanitized everything, so we're ready to start loading our filter media. At first, this can be a little bit confusing, at least it was for me. The directions they sent with this was not very good. It was a little confusing, so I want to take the time to explain it to you. But there's two sides of a filter pad. You have a rough side and a smooth side. You want to make sure that the beer comes in on the rough side. That's where it has more surface area for the yeast to settle out of, and it also is just the way that the pad is designed to be used. So on this particular filter, we have our beer intake on this side and the beer exits on this side and goes to your bright tank. So as the beer comes in, you pull your first plate, you'll notice two little holes right here. That's where the beer is coming into the plate. So you want to make sure that the rough side is facing that beer intake just like that. I even wrote it on the front of my filter, rough side facing out just as a reminder. So that filter pad would go in like that then your next filter pad will go in opposite direction. So you'd slide that plate down, and then now you have the smooth side facing that direction. And all the way down, you're gonna alternate this pad. So once you got your first pad loaded, it's actually pretty easy. The other thing that I do, and it's kind of a little bit of controversy, but I feel better about taking some star sand, and I actually squirt these pads down a little bit. I just kind of put a little bit on there. I'm not soaking them down real heavy. And it just makes me feel better that if there was anything on there, dust got in the box or something, you know, it's going to sanitize it. So then I'm going to go ahead and start placing all these filters in here. So we're going to load this up and then we're going to go on to the next step and show you how to do that. This next step is something that I like to do personally. It just makes me feel better about it. I'll take 185 degree water and I'll flush this entire system. 185 degrees is pasteurization temperature. So if there was anything on these filter pads or on the plate filters or inside your pump or anything, you're going to try and basically kill that off and it doesn't contaminate your beer. So I'm going to run that through for about three to five minutes. Then I'm going to shut it off and just let it rest at that temperature for, for about 10 minutes. Then what I'm going to do is actually take this and remove it from the hot water and I'm going to run cold filtered RO water through this. And I'm going to run the RO filtered water through until I no longer can detect a paper taste. So you're going to have to pull your sampling valve open and sample it along the way until you no longer taste that. It's just pure water and you don't taste any paper taste at all. But yes, you will get a paper taste out of these if you don't flush these out enough. So that's something I learned the hard way and uh, make sure you guys don't do that. So we're gonna fire this thing up and also we're gonna tighten this wheel down slowly, as you can see, until the leaks stop uh, coming out, you know? Because right now, we just barely tightened it up and all these gaskets aren't compressed yet. So we're gonna do that as the filters uh, hydrate and everything, and we're gonna slowly tighten that down just like this.
notice we don't have any product coming out of here yet, no water at all. That's how much water and how much liquid these pads will absorb before it actually starts coming out. It's quite impressive. And this water's been on for a while. There we go, it's just now starting to trickle out. The filter's all flushed out. Now we're ready to purge it with CO2. So I have the hose hooked up to the intake side of the pump there. Turn on the regulator. You can see the water coming out. I don't push this too hard. I go just till the bulk of that water comes out of there. And once it slows down, I shut that off. So what we just did was remove the oxygen out of the hose and the plates and the filters and everything. We also removed a big bulk of that water out of there because when you first start this thing up, as you'll see, it takes, it absorbs a lot of water and beer. So it's gonna take a long time for that beer to mix with that water and push out. So the more that we can actually remove that water, the less product we're gonna lose. Everything's hooked up. We're gonna go ahead and open our valve from our fermenter. Coming off the racking port there, I'm gonna open it real slow. Now you can see our sit up here. We got our line hooked up coming into the sight glass, into our trap. We're actually sending the product right down the drain. So what we have to figure out is at what point this turns to beer. Now you can see this is leaking a little bit. So this will be a common thing that we're gonna do is keep turning this wheel. You can actually hear the leak just stop. So now it's time to start sampling the beer and we have to make a determination of when we're gonna be able to stop sending it down the drain and start sending it into the tank. All right, we're gonna open up the sampling valve, take us a little sample out of here. This will tell us how clean our beer is. We're filtering nice and slow here. I'm pushing about four PSI. And what I do is open the valve over here on the bright tank just a little bit. You can hear it hissing. And I'm just pushing this with CO2. So this does have a permanent pump attached to it. And I really don't like using it unless I have to. So the idea is if the beer is fairly clean coming in, you have the appropriate size pads, the appropriate number of pads that you really shouldn't have to turn on the pump. You should be able just to push it with CO2. Now, the moment you turn the pump on, now you're putting excess pressure on the pads and you risk blowing yeast through. So it's slow and steady wins the race here. One of the biggest questions that comes up when we talk about filtering beer is what type of pad should I use? You know, and how much beer can I push through this? Or how many gallons of beer can I get through one pad? How many pads does it take to brew a batch of beer? These are all good questions and it really depends on a lot of factors so we're going to talk about that. We're going to start with what type of filter media to use. Personally, I prefer the five to seven micron range. I feel like that's a fine enough filtration. It, it gives you a nice, clean, clear beer. And it also doesn't remove too much where you're removing flavor. And it also is coarse enough where it's not gonna clog easily. So I've had great success in the five to seven micron range, but it really depends on your application. If you've got a really hazy beer, you might have to go up to a coarse filter. Or let's say you wanna go really fine, like a sterile filter for a seltzer or something like that. I like using a two-stage filtration for my seltzers. I'll actually run it through a five to seven first, then I'll go down into a half micron in a two-stage process, and it'll look like crystal clear water coming out when you're done. So it really depends on your application, but that's a good rule of thumb. If you wanna play it safe, a good five to seven is where to start. Now let's talk about the second side of the coin is how much beer can I put through one of these pads? And it really depends on a lot of factors, but a good rule of thumb is about five to 10 gallons per pad. Generally, I use about 28 pads to filter a five barrel batch of beer. So that's a good starting point. But if your beer is really hazy or cloudy or something, you may not get the, they, they might clog fast on that. So maybe you need a little bit more pads, you know, to get through that hazy batch of beer, or maybe you gotta up your filter media size 
to accommodate that. But a good rule of thumb, five to 10 gallons gets you there. So. You can actually buy this media in a 20 by 20 size. But what I found was the 40 by 40 size offers a larger variety of different styles of media, different micron ratings. So um, it's also a little bit cheaper and I normally just buy these and cut them down. It's real easy to do. You just get you a self-healing mat like this, a ruler, a uh, good utility knife. I put a fresh blade in there every time and it only takes about five minutes to cut down enough for a batch. So that's what we're going to do.